Joining me now here on the MMA Report is a man that's going to step back into the CES cage coming up next Friday night. CES MMA 42 as he takes on Kenny Foster, Joe Pingatori. Joe, as always, I appreciate the time. How's things been? Good, man. Feel good. Ready to go. Uh, as we're talking, uh, we're, we're eight days out from the fight, so uh, is it pretty much uh, all the hard work is done? Yeah, everything's good. Uh, had a great camp again. Uh, no injuries. My weight's fantastic right now, so excited about that i'm usually not this light and uh yeah everything's good for next friday interesting you bring up about your weight because uh i saw an interview uh that you did recently you talked about going down to 135 is that something that uh is potentially going to happen in the very near future i would say yes Uh, i i walk so light you know and uh then when i start really training and cutting it just the weight falls off so i think that's the play for the future I mean, in terms of right now, I mean, how close are you to 145? Uh, I weighed in this morning at like 153. So, you know, by next week, I'll probably be there just from the natural dieting. And, of course, Kenny Foster here, 11-11 in his career. He has lost three in a row. But you have, a, a, I guess, a, a little inside information on him, the fact of Calvin Cater was his last opponent. You, you trained with Calvin a, a little bit. So how instrumental has Calvin been in, in the preparations for this? Calvin's cool. He's he's uh he's different than most fighters. Calvin uh, actually last week was showing me he goes through all of the all of his opponents' fights and writes down all these notes in his phone. I mean, like this this guy had like maybe two pages of notes on his opponents, and he's like, oh yeah, Kenny Forrest was like, wait a minute, I'll I'll pull him up, and he pulled him up. He starts showing me all these notes on him. So and that's different, you know. I and I think that's a good idea for me for the future to start doing that, and. Uh, Besides his three losses or two losses in a row, I mean, that doesn't matter. I, I saw him fight uh, Ken, um, Calvin last year, and he's game, and, and that was a close fight. So I'm not taking him lightly. I don't care about his, you know, coming off his two losses. You know, that doesn't mean anything to me because I, I know what he do. I know what he can do. I know what he's capable of. So, you know, I'm going in there, you know, ready to finish. When you saw all those notes that he had on, on Kenny, anything uh... – was there any surprises in those notes of that that pretty much you're like, oh, really? A uh, few notes. I won't get into them, but uh, I'd say one or two things that, uh, you know, he pointed out that made a lot of sense. So I'm going to be interested in capitalizing on those points. And, of course, you're coming off that victory back at CESMA uh, 40. Uh, you know, a, a great win for you. First round yeah. stoppage victory. Uh, was was would you call that a, an A plus performance? It would have been better if I finished uh, when I rocked him in the beginning, and he, I, he kind of survived, and I finished him at the end of the round. I would have liked, in a perfect performance, to finish him. You know, in that I, I think I dropped him in that first ten seconds of the fight. So I would have loved to. I'd give myself an A performance for that one. Were you surprised that you were able to to drop him that quick? No. No, I think I think I hit the hardest out of anyone uh, in the Northeast, maybe even in the country. I don't know. Yeah, I haven't fought anyone on the national scene yet, so. But I'm confident in my hands, and uh, yeah, like I said, I I think what it comes down to is my strength and uh, strength and everything else. I think is just. One of my main things I look forward, look, rely on when it gets down to that uh, dogfight. And I think I power everyone out. Spencer was a, a taller opponent. Kenny, yeah. Kenny, a shorter opponent. So uh, different worlds here. Of, is, yeah. it, is it easier to prepare for a taller opponent or a shorter opponent? It's funny because Kenny's probably the first guy I'm going to fight that's my height. Which is another reason why I should be going down 35. Just people more my size, but... Uh, Kenny's yeah five eight five seven, so it's gonna be interesting to fight finally someone my height. I don't think I fought anyone my height since the amateur days. Uh, everyone I prepare for is always taller than me. Everyone I spar with is always taller than me. So if anything, it should be an easy adjustment. It, it, did you? Uh, are you working with anybody new for this for this camp to get you ready for Kenny? Nope. Uh, same people. I got a bunch of great wrestlers at my camp between there and Sit Your Tongue. So, you know, same same guys, and I like where I'm at. I like my camps, and everything's been going great. Do you kind of think that Kenny's just going to try to get this fight to the ground as quickly as possible? Yeah, yep. 
Yep. With Calvin, he didn't do that really. I think he was kind of hesitant because of Calvin's such a big dude. Like for 45, he's almost six feet tall. I think he had trouble getting inside. With me, I don't think. I hopefully he respects the power, but I think he's gonna try to get inside and take him down. Like he said, he's looking for a submission, which is fine. You know, that's at this point, I feel comfortable wherever I go. Life outside of fighting, uh, EMT. So, uh, do do you take all of next week off? Yeah, I do. Yep. I actually recently just switched over to per diem. I'm not full time anymore. I wanted to focus more on fight career right now because I. You know, I'm in a good spot. I feel like a few more wins, I could really be going somewhere. So, you know, and I'm 26. I, I have my whole life to work. Uh, so it's like, you know, what, what do I got to lose? I can still pick up as many shifts as I want on the ambulance. But right now, it's the focus is going to be fighting full time. And I know you've talked about you kind of believe that 10 wins is kind of that, that benchmark that you're shooting for. Why, why is it 10 that you feel like that's got to be what it's going to take you to get to that next level. When I notice all the newcomers in the UFC a lot, and you look at their win to loss differential, uh, you know, 10 and two, I think that's a really solid record. 10, nine, whatever. 10 sounds better, obviously, but uh, yeah, we'll see. I'm, it's good to set a goal in your head and then go from there. So that, so 10, two and one is where I want to be next year. In terms of ideally in 2017, do you think that you can get those three fights in this year to get to that 10th win? Definitely. Yep. And like I said, I'm hoping I started with uh, Spencer last fight, and I'm I'm hoping to just get – not that I'm going to overcommit on anything, but I'm hoping to get these first-round wins because, you know, that's what, that's what the UFC wants to see. They Bellator too, you know, to get a big contract. you got to be finishing people. No one wants to see – that guy come in and wrestle you for three rounds and lay on you, you know? So yeah, I'm hoping to get, uh, these first round wins, these first round knockups. Do you think you're going to drop down to 135 before potentially, you know, going, whether it's UFC or Bellator? I think the only way I go up to the next level is cutting down to 35. And yeah, I trained with font for a while. It's, you know, uh, who else is it? Tony Martin's there, and Tony Martin's a 55er at Say Tongue, and he's massive. You know, yeah. there's, there's, there's no way I don't think I'd be able to compete at 45 or 55 up there. So I think 35 is the best fit for me. And I'm, and I'm not worried about making the weight either. You know, so we'll so, see. A guy like Tony, sometimes I'm even surprised he gets down to 155 because I've heard he gets up to like 180, 185. He's big, yeah, and uh, Nate Andrews too. You know, I've been trained with him since the beginning. Another guy walks around 180, 190, makes 55. So you got to think that these 35ers are probably walking what I walk at 60, 65. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, it's very possible, and I think going full time uh, as fighting full time, you know, and just being per diem on the on the ambulance, I think I'll be able to focus way more on the weight cut because being on the ambulance full time it's crazy but you never have time to yourself and you're always on the road you're always eating like shit you know unless you really meal prep so i think it's gonna be i think it's gonna work out so in terms in terms of being on per diem is it just like you call up and say hey is i can work today or how does that work uh they so it's all through uh like a website pretty much and then i get text so like hey this shift opened up so and so a date this time, and then uh, you bid on it. And I've had uh, I'm on like four years seniority now, so you know any shift I want, I think I'll be able to grab. And of course, this fight coming up next Friday night, CSM May 42. Uh, any predictions on how you get the victory? I'm just pumped to you know have the week to myself and really just I'm interested in how I'm gonna. I usually go in and I'm you know you you always got nerves and stuff before the fight, but now I'm just. I'm so relaxed. Just I don't have to worry about working. I'm just really focused on the fight, and uh, hopefully, I get in another first round submission or knockout. Is can being too relaxed be a concern? Maybe for some guys. Some guys are such head cases in the back before they fight, and me, it's just like it's always been. You know, it's 15 minutes. These three fives where I don't have to worry about anything else in life. You just you just kind of in there and just. You know, doing what you love to do. So I think it. I think it's easy. It comes easy for me. It really does. 
And of course, everyone's going to be able to watch this next Friday night live on Access TV. Joe, as always, I appreciate the time and good luck in the fight. Thank you, man. Appreciate it.